and welcome to CBS News Primetime. I'm John Dickerson. We are broadcasting to you from New York City, where tonight a new precedent has been set for this nation. For the first time in our history, a former president of the United States has been indicted. The Manhattan grand jury voted Thursday to charge Donald Trump in the hush money payment scheme during his 2016 campaign. Mr. Trump will be asked to surrender himself to authorities. He will be fingerprinted and photographed then face a judge for arraignment. This part is important. Details of the indictment are sealed by the New York City Attorney General Alvin Bragg. We do not yet know the specifics of what the 45th president is charged with. He responded to the indictment from Mar-a-Lago, his estate in Florida. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Trump called it a political persecution and said he was innocent, which he is until proven otherwise. We'll have to travel to New York City where they, and he will have to travel to New York City where the New York Police Department is out in full force, tightening up security around the courthouse as some protest, protesters gather in lower Manhattan. We're gonna begin our reporting there with CBS News reporter Graham Cates, who is outside the district attorney's office in New York City. Graham, give us a sense of the scene where you are right now. So uh, more and more uh, protesters are beginning to filter, and it's still not a very big crowd. There's way more media than there is protesters here, but there is a heavy security presence, and this has been building now for about two hours since news of the indictment broke, and that came uh, really shortly after the grand jury wrapped up its work, uh, ending around 5 p.m. today. Uh, and, now, uh, and, and now there's just kind of a lot of onlookers coming to see the scene, as many people, it looks like just seeing what's going on is actually here in support or against the indictment itself. So Graham, give us a sense of the timeline. What's what's the next uh, most important element and when are we going to when will we learn what is in this indictment? So the way this is supposed to work is you an indictment is unsealed when the defendant is arraigned. And, and until then, it, it remains uh, under seal, which means that we don't get to know. But there is, there is one part of this, which is that they uh, could have described the charges to Trump's legal team. And then it's really up to them or Trump how much of it they want to make public. Uh, but, but we don't really know what's going to happen with that. We don't know how much of the indictment was actually described to the lawyers, if at all. So uh, in the meantime, we're really waiting on Trump and his team to kind of have their way with this moment where, where he's been indicted. He's the first pre former president in American history to be indicted. And that's all we know. And he's the only one who's really allowed to talk about it uh, authoritatively. The DA can't yet, until it's unsealed, say anything about it. And while he may want to talk about it authoritatively, he will not have seen uh, the indictment. It is sealed. And so everything he says will be like uh, many things that he says based on his uh, view of things, but not based on the actual facts of the case because he has not seen them. Right. And so even in this case, our confirmation of the indictment came from his legal team. Uh, and his lawyer uh, told me uh, about 20 minutes uh, after after five o'clock that, that it had happened. Uh, and, and so that's what I mean by authoritatively. Right now, that's basically how we got the news is his, his legal team told us it happened. But the DA obviously hasn't confirmed it yet. And so really for for a little bit, for just that little bit until he has to surrender, the ball is in his court. And Graham, remind us again why the district attorney of Manhattan is uh, the one we're all paying attention to right now in this case. Right. So the Manhattan District Attorney, uh, the Manhattan District Attorney's office has been running this investigation for uh, between four and five years. Uh, and, and the newest uh, member of the team in some ways is, is the current Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, who took over the case uh, 15 months ago after he was elected. And, um, and, and they've been, they started looking first at this hush money payment, and then it became this broad, wide, sweeping investigation into Donald Trump's finances. Uh, and then it refocused really just in the last half year as the uh, uh, trial of the Trump organization was coming to a close and, and in which the, the company itself was convicted of, uh, of, of some, um, sorry, of charges related to um, falsification of business records. And right around then, this investigation started reheating up and in January the grand jury began to meet and consider these new charges. All right, Graham Cates from Lower Manhattan. Thank you very much, Graham.
I'm now joined by Major Garrett and Robert Costa. Major is CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent and Bob is CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent. Major, I want to start with you. What now? Well, what now is you're going to have a legal team on the Trump side telling the Manhattan District Attorney that this case has no basis in law. They may seek a venue change, take it out of Manhattan. They may say that the way that the district attorney handled the grand jury has some suspicious aspects to it. They're going to challenge this on every single legal front they can, which is the former president's right. You can expect a vigorous defense both to delay and redirect whatever is said in the indictment about the underlying allegations and how it comports with the law. The Trump legal team will say, no, it doesn't fit within the law and it doesn't fit within the fact pattern in all likelihood, and it may not even be within the statute of limitations. The Trump legal team will look for every possible weakness in this indictment and fight each and every one of them tooth and nail. Bob, we're in the middle of a presidential campaign. What does this mean for uh, President Trump's presidential run? And what's your sense of, of the rest of the field and how they respond? John, in the short term, we've seen a lot of uh, Republicans, uh, in terms of both the leaders of the party uh, and rank and file, respond with grievance to the news of this indictment, expressing support for former President Donald Trump, rallying to his side politically. But long term, this is a political and legal variable. We do not know how this is ultimately going to affect the Republican presidential race, whether voters might eventually tire of former President Trump and his legal challenges. But for now, this is certainly fueling his argument that he is, as he put it tonight on True Social, under political persecution. And because of that characterization of this moment, he believes he can consolidate his support. Just in the last hour, speaking to some of his allies, they believe this could propel him forward. But they do know, as Major has detailed, that he is facing so much beyond New York. Two grand jury investigations in Washington, D.C., led by the special counsel, Jack Smith, as well as a decision in Georgia over whether he will be ultimately indicted there over his election conduct. Major, when you reported your, your last book about the fragile state of the country with respect to the midterm elections um, uh, and the presidential election, the 2020 election, um, rely on that reporting that you did to give us your sense of how this news gets processed by the country and its polarized nature. John, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but this will have a very volatile effect on America's political dialogue. Everything I learned in reporting about what former President Trump said about the 2020 election, which was in every way, shape and form, a lie. The election wasn't stolen. Joe Biden was not a fraudulent president. There was not some massive effort conducted to deprive President Trump of a fair election. That election was fair, legal and verified. But he said the contrary. And that was believed in large measure by his supporters for the simple reason that he kept repeating it. And in the last several days leading up to this indictment, what has the former president said? This indictment, when it comes, if it comes, will be political. And his supporters therefore believe it. There is a direct correlation and almost a call and response relationship former President Trump has with his supporters. He says it, they, only be, they not only believe it, but they begin to repeat it, and in some cases begin to act on it. And that's what brings me to this question of volatility. The president has said he is a victim of a political persecution, and the country must rise up to protect him. How his, his supporters, some of them, interpret that and then act upon that is part of the volatility this country will confront in the coming days. All right, Major Garrett, thank you. Uh, Bob, really quickly, was. Trump caught off guard by this? His lawyers had expected a decision to be made potentially in the coming weeks, but Trump allies tell us tonight they were surprised at the timing. Bragg held his cards close to his vest as district attorney. All right, Bob Costa and Major Garrett, thank you both for your insight there about the politics of this. And we're now going to turn to Finn Gomez. He is the political director for CBS News. Uh, Finn, you've been talking to several senior Trump advisors. What are they telling you? 
Yeah, yeah, current and former uh, senior Trump advisors, and one that I spoke to, John, just a couple minutes ago, says that, echoing what, what Bob and Major just said, is that uh, they believe that this is a, quote, net positive for, for the former president uh, politically, that it reinforces all the narratives that he's been spouting, that the political class is out to get him. Uh, the, uh, this advisor also predicts, you know, the end of the quarter ends uh, tomorrow, that, that the, Trump could, the Trump campaign could have the best fundraising of the year following this indictment news and, and possibly the best quarter uh, fundraising quarter of the cycle. Again, this is according to a, a, uh, a senior advisor to the uh, to the former president. Um, uh, but speaking to them overall, the sense is that, you know, at least initially, this will help Trump politically with uh, Republicans uh, circling the wagons, if you will. Uh